Hey, this is Lara and Good News Ministry. I was just walking along, praying, spending time with my beloved Lord Jesus Christ. I am so in love with him. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I was talking to him out loud. <laughs> and this is what I said, and I can't remember word for word, but basically what I said is, Lord, the reason I don't want to be with a man is because I don't want to give up one moment of loving and worshiping and honoring and praising and serving and glorifying you, Lord, and telling the world about you. Now, let me tell you something. If you had known me in younger years, I'm in my early 50s now, but in earlier years, I was the most man, relationship, dating, boyfriend, Beyonce, marriage, obsessed woman you could possibly imagine. I lived and breathed from about 17 years uh, old on for years to come to find the perfect man, the perfect relationship, ultimately the perfect marriage. I was so obsessed. It was, it was, it, my obsession was out of control. It was, um, now I can look back, I can say it was embarrassing, it was shameful, it was sick, it was ugly, it was dirty, it was sinful. But at the time, I would tell you, I just, I was lost. I did not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I knew almost nothing about him. And even when I came to believe in him, I still exalted men and relationships over Jesus. And here I am now. I have, um, I was ultimately, um, none of the relationships worked out. And I was abandoned by two husbands. And my second ex-husband, whom I dearly loved, passed away just under a year ago. Um, of a combination of um, COPD and an opioid addiction. It was a very painful, hard marriage, but the Lord blessed us after the marriage with an amazing love and forgiveness for one another. The first marriage was with an unbeliever and I called myself a believer in Jesus and I was, I did, I was not a follower of Jesus at the time. Anyway, all of this to say, I probably still could, if I wanted to go out and look for a man and a date and a relationship and maybe a marriage, boyfriend, fiance. I don't think it's too late. I don't think I'm too far gone. For someone who is obsessed with men and relationships as I was, it is miraculous and only by the grace of God that he has taken me to a place where I literally do not want to be with a man because I am so madly and passionately and head over heels in love with Jesus and so devoted to him. I don't want to be distracted. I do not want to be distracted. Please look at 1 Corinthians, I believe chapter 7, if I have it correctly. Um, there's a bunch of verses about not being distracted um, by, by being in a relationship or being in a marriage with, with the opposite, you know, with the opposite sex or gender. Um, and the Apostle Paul is speaking about how when we are, if I were to be with a man right now, my focus would be very much so on the man and on pleasing him. And instead, my focus is on Jesus. He is my beloved Father in heaven, my God, my Lord and Savior. He's also my husband. The, the believers in Jesus are considered to be the bride of Christ. And I, not only am I so devoted and, and passionately in love with the Lord, and so enjoy his presence and in experiencing his love and his mercy and his grace and his truth and the hope and the joy that can only be found in Christ. But I am totally sold out, devoted to telling this world about him, to helping people to believe in him and to follow him, to be faithful, to humbly be his blessed um, children and servants of God. I am literally 24 seven devoted to the Lord and to my ministry work. And um, yeah, I get a little bit of rest along the way, but I am so available to him. I just don't have the distractions of relationships. I've told the Lord, Lord, if you want me to be with a man again, you pick the man. And the only reason I would be in a relationship with a man again is to glorify you, oh God. And every once in a while, I'm like, well, you know what? We could minister together, but that's not my call. And the apostle T Paul talks about some people being called to what in modern day America, we would call singlehood. Um, I, I believe he may even call it the, the gift of singleness. And, and he says, look, if you can't hold yourself back and, and your passions or your lusts or whatever you want to call them, then yes, definitely be married. But hey, if you're not called to that, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And 
I really want to speak words of encouragement to any and all of you who are single out there. Please don't go running to find a relationship and ultimately a marriage unless you know it's the Lord. In that case, make sure that you end up with a believer in Christ because that's what God calls us to in relationships, marriages. Make sure it's his will. Don't try to pick the person in relationship and marriage yourself. Let it be at the leading of the Lord in the right time. Let it be for his glory, not for fulfillment of self and, and, and all of that. But consider the possibility it may not be his will, maybe not now, maybe not ever. And I want to encourage you, listen, I don't have an easy life. I have a history of decades of brokenness beyond human hope and repair. You can read my personal story at goodnews.love. And I wish I could tell you that when I became a totally sold out, devoted follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, everything got easy. It's been hard. I do not, I struggle. I don't have an easy life. I struggle every day of my life. I have long time circumstances that are very painful. I have personal struggles that are amazingly challenging. The Lord is constantly testing me, trying me, changing me, growing me. The devil comes at me indescribably hard to try to destroy me, my life, and, and specifically this ministry. I'm, I'm on the road full time with four handicapped dogs for the past three and a half years. I'm usually far away from family. I'm on my own a great deal and I love people, um, except for ministering to people and interacting a little bit, you know, when I'm out in a grocery store or something. There's a lot of solitude. I spend much of my time with the Lord and doing my writing and publishing. And then of course my streets ministry when the Lord leads me to. Um, but I struggle every day but I have the love and the hope and the peace of joy of Jesus. Uh, somebody, a friend of mine, a, a believer in, in the Lord who I've been ministering to a little bit and, and been blessed to call friend and sister, you know, asked me, well, do you ever miss it? Do you ever get lonely? Like, do you miss, she couldn't even put it into words, but I think she meant the companionship and, and the love of, of a man. And I said, no, I'm never lonely. Do I feel alone and on my own? I feel on my own a great deal of the time. Um, there's a lot, I get a lot of rejection and hatred, especially from Christians and pastors and churches. They seem to not be pleased with the fact that I'm completely sold out to Christ in the Bible and I'm not interested in any of the modern day shenanigans at churches, all the entertainment and, and worldliness that's gotten into the churches. I have no interest and I'm, I'm, an, I'm called as an evangelist. I think they may not like that. I don't really know. So I get a lot of rejection, a lot of hatred. I'm on my own a great deal. I, I'm, I miss my family beyond anything you could possibly believe. Do I get lonely? No, because I feel such a strong presence of Christ in my heart and in my life. Do I miss the companionship, companionship of a man? I don't. I, years ago, I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if it's your will that I not be with a man, then take away those desires. And you know, I'm talking about those desires, sexual desires that just the human desires that humans have, I, you know, and the desire for companionship and all that, he took it all away. He is my companion. I, I used to listen to a song years ago when I was just broken and lost and drunk and chasing after a man I should not have been with. Um, it, it was horrible. I was not a believer in Jesus. He was married, getting divorced. It was just a mess. And there was a song I would listen to over and again, beautiful song. It was called True Companion. I have found my true companion and he is Jesus and my friend whether you are single or whether you are in a relationship or whether you are even married your first love your true companion needs to be the Lord he must be our first love he says in the Bible that he speaks to some people in the book of Revelation and says they've lost their first love may we never lose our first love may our greatest priority and number one always be God Almighty and the Bible and his will and plan for our lives. So one last time, I encourage you, I encourage you, first of all, read the Bible, learn more about marriage, about divorce, about singlehood, about sexual immorality, which there's so much of that we need to repent of. Learn in the Bible, read the Bible every day. Turn from your sins, believe Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross to pay your sin penalty and was raised from the dead. Devote yourself to God and his ways. Receive him as Lord and Savior. Receive his forgiveness and the promise of everlasting life. That's when, when we are born again spiritually, which is what I just described, then his Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. And we can also ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit, even if you are already born again and you've not received that gift, that's when the Holy Spirit just comes to fill you up to overflowing to enable and equip you 
to go out and help others to find and follow Jesus, specifically to really witness and, and to share the gospel with others. And once you have that foundation, go forth following Jesus day by day, whatever he has for your life, whether it's singlehood or not singlehood, whatever it is, be thankful and always, always, always make God your number one. There's a section in the Bible, I don't know where it is, it talks about eunuchs, and I think of eunuch as somebody who's single. And he says that in, in the Word, it, it shows us that, that eunuchs end up being eunuchs for different reasons. One of the reasons is by choice. One is because that's what ended up, up happening to them because of their life circumstances. I didn't choose, I didn't sit down one day and say, oh, I think I'll be single. I went through some very, very difficult years, like I said, two abandonments, two un unwanted divorces. And I ended up single, not by choice, but where I thought it would be the worst case scenario, it's been the best case scenario. And look at the joy that I have. And, and let me tell you, even if you have the most wonderful relationship with the human that you think in the world, let me tell you something, nothing compares to the number one relationship that we can have in this universe that we can only have through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So my friend, I hope this is an encouragement to you. Please visit me and Good News Ministry online at goodnews.love. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.